Hey, it's Christopher, and in this free cat tutorial, I'm finally going to show you how to post-process an operation. For many tutorials, I have been showing you how to use these operations, um, but now finally, I'm going to show you how to actually get the G code from it, and then using Gerbil and Universal G Code Center, I will demonstrate cutting it on the CNC router. So I already have my part drawn up and my operations made. First, I'll be facing the top of this, um, and my stock is a little bit bigger than my um, finished size, so I'm going to first face that off. And then, after that, I will mill these pockets out in a couple passes, and then cut out a contour. And I already have my um, simulation done. This is what it should look like after all three operations are done. I've left a little bit of material here at the bottom because there are no tabs, so I don't want it to um, come off as soon as it's finished cutting. Um, that way, I'll still have it clamped in. I don't have to worry about the end mill kicking it around. All this will be done with a quarter inch end mill, um, and the relative size, this is about a three inch diameter piece. So to post process um, we don't need this cut material actually we will be post processing the job. Um, by post processing the job it includes all of our tools and operations and everything including all the data in the setup sheet. So you want to make sure you fill out all of the data um, like the rapid movement um, speeds and then with your tool controller, you want to make sure that you also fill out the feeds um, and speeds. In some of my tutorials, I've just left this out because I wasn't post-processing, but if you are going to be post-processing, you have to make sure you go back and add these in your feeds and speeds into your tools. Now, to post-process, um, I'm also going to edit my job, um, and in the output, I'll be using Gerbil. Um, and then the file path to where you want to save it. I'm just calling it logo, actually. Logo.gcode. And everything in the setup and tools should be the same, but the output is important when you're post-processing. With all of that set up and the job selected, this is the post-process button right here. You can click on it. I'll just put it in my home directory logo.gcode and save it there. And it gives you the sample of the code and then I'm going to open it up and here is the file that it just generated. We can scroll through and see all of the lines of g-code that it's produced. Um, actually I'm going to walk through a little bit what it's doing. When reading G-code that you've just post-processed, most likely you'll come across a couple lines here that are in parentheses. Anything in parentheses, the computer will completely ignore. It's just a comment, and it's for the human operator to read. Um, here, in this case, it gives some information about um, the post-process itself. It's not until line 5 that the computer starts reading, and here we have a G17. This tells the computer we have selected the XY plane, and G90 means absolute positioning. So all of these XYZ coordinates down here will be in reference to the origin. G21, this means we're using metric, so all of the values here will be millimeters or millimeters per minute. Here are some more comments. This is about the tool itself, and then we get to a tool change in M6 to tool 1, T1, and then in M3, is a spindle on clockwise or on forward to S4000, um, a speed of 4000 RPM. More comments, this time about the operation, and then we finally get to the body of the G code itself um, for the operation. You'll notice here we have a lot of G0s, G1s, G2s, and G3s. Um, I'll go ahead and briefly explain what each of these do. A G0, this is a rapid move. That means the machine is going to move as fast as it can to the given position, um, x, y, z value. If um, x and y don't change, then it doesn't give the x, y, z value. And here, z doesn't change, so it doesn't give the z value. 
Anyway, G0 um, rapid is when it's not cutting, it's just setting up a position. So it doesn't need a feed rate, it just goes as fast as it can. G1 is a straight line linear move when it is cutting. So it does give a feed rate. Um, you want your tool to be moving at a certain feed rate whenever you're cutting to get a good surface finish and it's easier on your tool. So a G1, the X, Y, Z uh, values here give the position of the endpoint of the line that the tool is traveling along. A G2, um, this is a clockwise arc. Here it gives, again, the endpoint X, Y, Z for the arc. And I and J give the relative position of the center of the arc. Again, we have F feed rate. Um, G3 right here, this is a counterclockwise arc. Um, similar to a G2, we have the X, Y, Z end point of the arc. I and J relative center and the feed rate. The feed rate here is measured in millimeters per minute. Um, I had a lot of problem with the units early on though. It was uh, post-processing 60 times slower than I, what I wanted. And that's because it was doing millimeters per second and it comes out to about 8.47. Anyway, um, I figured out that the reason why this was happening was because I was using an older version of FreeCAD. Um, that post-processed in millimeters per second. So if you are having this problem, make sure you have the newest version of FreeCAD so that you get the units correct. This is millimeters per minute, um, and we stated that that's what we're using in this G21 um, when we select metric. So if you're using Gerbil and you want millimeters per minute, make sure you have the newest version of FreeCAD um, to get this value here. And if that still doesn't work, all your feed rates are wrong, you can use a find and replace um, to just select all of your feed rates and change them all at once if you need to. So this is the body of the operation. Um, we're starting out here with this facing and then a tool change um, and starting the pocket operation. This is a long one, a lot of G1s. And then we get down here to a tool change and we start the contour, a lot of G1s and G2s, linear and clockwise arcs. And finally, we get down to the bottom of our program. Here we have an M5. An M5 is a spindle stop. G17, G90 is the same as we saw at the top of the program. XY plane selection and absolute positioning and an M2. M2 is a program stop. Oftentimes, you'll see this as an M30, actually. M2 stops the program, but M30 stops and rewinds, which means it'll send it all the way back up to the top of the program. This is especially useful if you're running a lot of the same part. So you can just change the setup and click cycle start again. You don't have to reset the program. So um, even though the uh, post processor does a lot of this G code work for you, you probably are still going to want to learn G code if you don't already know it. So that you can catch little mistakes that you might find in the feed rate units, or maybe you want to throw an M30 at the end of the program instead of an M2. Anyway, this is the final G code that we'll be using with Universal G Code Sender. Uh, we're going to send this file to the CNC machine and we'll use all of this data to cut out our part. In order to get Universal G Code Sender, you can go to their website. It is winder.github.io slash UGS underscore website slash, and I'll put the link in the description. So this is their website, um, and if you go to downloads, you can find under the stable versions, um, the newest one right now is 2.0. Right now I have 2.0 platform beta, and it's saying that you have to have Java 8 or higher. Once you have that, um, and you install the UGS, then you can open it up. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, there's a lot of settings in here. We'll be using Gerbil as the firmware, and once we get the machine plugged in and the part loaded in here, then we can start cutting um, using the G code that we created. This is the CNC machine that I'll be using. Here is the machine zero, and I have a clamp set up to hold our part. In order to connect your machine, you're probably going to have to hook it up with a USB port. 
and then make sure your baud rate and port settings are correct and connect the machine. Um, you can see all of this is now activated. And before we do anything else, we have to do a dollar sign capital X um, and that will reset the alarm and unlock the machine. Now we can use these buttons to jog and go ahead and open up our file, um, G code file. And we can see all of the tool paths that we created in FreeCAD. This will be the file it cuts um, after we set the zero positions using the jog. These are the jog controls. We can set the step size and feed rate in either inches or millimeters. And then using these buttons, we can move the machine around. Um, and then we can reset any of these values back to zero and make that the home position. And whatever the home position is, we can tell the machine in machine actions reset or uh, return to zero we can make the machine come back to the point that it started at. This is my stock material. It is 725 thousandths thick, and it will be finished down to 700 thousandths. But it clamps nicely in here against the fence and the clamp, and this is where I will be cutting. This center point here is my origin, and that is where I want my cutter to be homed. This is the approximate size of my part, so I've got good margins on all sides. Anyway, if I want my home to be 700 thousandths above my table, and this is 725 thousandths, then somehow I need to find the top of my work and move it off to the side and move down 25 thousandths. And that should bring me to a height of 700 thousandths. There are a couple different ways of doing this. One way would be to use a piece of paper, which is about four thousandths of an inch thick. Basically, you would move your tool down um, as you're moving the paper until the tool gets close enough that it catches the paper. At this point, you know that you are four thousandths of an inch above your part. Then you could move up one thousandths to release the paper. Now we're five thousandths of an inch above the part. And then we can move it off to the edge move down 30 thousandths, 25 plus 5, and now we are at the correct height and we can set the zero on our machine. A dollar bill also works pretty well for this. It is also 4 thousandths of an inch, but if you want to be really accurate, then you need to get yourself a Franklin, which is also 4 thousandths of an inch. From my experience, these are about 100 times more accurate than anything else I've used. Now I'll set my tool position right above my origin and begin setting the Z height with the method I just described. I'm moving my tool in intervals of 100 thousandths until I get pretty close to my origin, and then I'll go in 1,000th intervals until I touch my paper. My tool is now 4 thousandths of an inch above my work, so I will move my tool up 1,000th to release the paper, and now move my tool over to set it down 30 thousandths to the correct height. With my tool out of the way, I can now move it down 30 thousandths and set my zero Z position right there. With my Z position set, I'll now jog back to the origin, do a little bit of fine tuning, and then set my X and Y home right here. My X and Y position now look good, so I'll reset their positions. And now we have our home set in all three directions. Oftentimes, if you're trying to set your X and Y position, you would use an edge finder to get a more accurate reading of where your tool is. But because I have so much extra room on both sides, um, I think I can just eyeball this one. And after I retract my Z up a little bit, we should be able to run the program. Now, just a couple more things before we hit the run button. Our spindle is not connected to the computer, so you have to turn it on manually before you start the program. If yours is like this, make sure you start the spindle before you start the program. Once you have that, make sure your part is clamped well, and then make sure you have proper safety attire, glasses, and even a face shield wouldn't be a bad idea. 
Finally, we are ready to click the big green run button and watch the CNC do all the work. I'll need to do some sanding to get all of these stringy wood chips off, and I intentionally did not cut all the way through, but um, I'll have to take a bandsaw, um, cut around this circle to detach it, and then sand around the edges, and then maybe finish it up. I think it turned out pretty well. Well, I think that turned out alright, even though we didn't use $100 to set the Z-axis. In fact, because we used FreeCAD instead of buying some expensive software, we might have a couple more of these laying around. So now we've gone all the way from designing a part to creating the G-code and cutting it out on a CNC machine. This example I showed might be sort of like a hobby project, but CNC is used all the time in manufacturing and prototyping. It's a really valuable skill to have. So I hope this was a good method for learning that skill. Um, and make sure if you liked it, you uh, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And leave a comment in the description if you make any really cool projects with CNC. Thanks for watching.